it's very confusing for a lot of my fans. They say, Todd, I was listening at 9.30 in the morning and the, you weren't on. <laughs> Too funny. I get it though. Yeah, Five geez. seconds. Here we go. Welcome back to Talk Law Radio. I'm Todd Marquardt here with Alonzo Harden, officer with San Antonio Police Department talking about Blue Santa, uh, the program where uh, Blue Santa will show up at uh, someone's home and drop off gifts. Um, Officer Harden, please say again um, your your version of what Blue Santa is. Uh, I loved your description of the program. All right, um, Blue Santa, uh, exactly, basically what it is, it's an opportunity for police officers to engage in the communities that they protect and serve. Simply what you have to do is go to any police substation throughout the city of San Antonio, walk in, fill out an application, make sure that you show a proof of address and birth certificates, and uh, then sit back and relax. And just before Christmas, you'll see an officer in a patrol car come out and deliver uh, some hope, some joy, some Christmas joy, and some love. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity for officers to to give back to their community, to be seen as uh, the humans that we are uh, before even donning on that uniform. Um, so uh, it's a great joy, it's a great feeling uh, to be a part of an organization that knows the importance of engaging with the community. And this is just one super, super awesome way that we're able to uh, engage our community in a positive way, be seen in a positive way and uh, again, just bring that joy to a home. Um, so I love the Blue Santa program, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great, awesome. thank it's you awesome. for saying all that. A uh, couple more questions, uh, just uh, based on your experience, um, when, when Blue Santa in the Santa suit does show up to an event and there's children around, do the children ever make comments about having him in a blue suit rather than a red suit? I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there is that conversation, um, but it's easily passed over because uh, he is surrounded um, by officers in blue and I think the kiddos get it. And you know, I know the focus is primarily for the kids, but Todd, I have to share with you that, you know, the adults too, they, they feel it, they see it, they love it. It brings back uh, good memories for them, mm -hmm. uh, takes them back uh, to days of when they were those ages looking for Santa Claus. And so when we have that opportunity to bring Blue Santa into um, the communities or neighborhoods, businesses, it's it's an all around win for, for everybody. It's just that moment of joy, laughter, what you see in the eyes of the people and the, the jiggle and the jingle of their bellies and you, know, mm -hmm. you see the joy in their eyes. It's just awesome. It's just awesome to see for that moment, there's that serenity. There's that true serenity. Next week is Thanksgiving. And so uh, all month I've been talking to my guests about uh, Thanksgiving tradition. Uh, some of the tr traditions that, that my family has, uh, we like to watch the parades. We like to uh, just hang out and sit around. Um, some of us cook, some of us don't. And, uh, and then of course we eat and then, and then we relax some more, but we like to play board games and things like that. Any special family uh, tradition for Thanksgiving that you wanna share? Um, family traditions, again, like as you just pointed out, um, just getting together, sitting around, going back down memory lane. But another big part that the San Antonio police officers play a role in is the Rahu Jimenez dinner. Okay. Uh, those are officers down there uh, helping to support, feed our homeless uh, community and those that just may not have that uh, blessing to, to right. enjoy in a home. So that's another big piece that, that I enjoy doing, taking part in. And um, But spending time with family is always nice um, because you know we can very easily get caught up in the everyday life of work and the bustle, the hustle, um, where we don't get an opportunity to make that quality time important. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, I feel that it should be an effort made, not just during the holidays, but as much as you can. You know, I, I firmly believe in uh, making a life 
uh, for a living instead of making a living for a life. That's just awesome. that's just how I am. Yeah. You know, because uh, I, I I can reflect back on some of the um, basketball games I may have missed with, mm -hmm. with my little ones mm -hmm. because I was too busy trying to make a living. Right. You know. So now with age comes wisdom. Right. Uh, so it's very important now that I understand that it's all about uh, making a life and making a living. So those traditions are increasing in our home. Uh, where it's just more about, you know, no need to try to go to work and try to get that extra money or overtime or whatever. I need to spend time with my family. So that's what that's what's great. Really They're very me. blessed to have yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is our last segment and we like to talk about legacy on the show. So legacy comes from the Bible, and um, one of the first mentions of it is in Genesis 49.1, when Jacob was blessing his sons. Um, this was an old practice. Uh, so the verse uh, 49.1 says, Then Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you what shall happen to you in the days to come. He was saying that at the end of his life, and sometimes we don't know when the end of our life is gonna be, so we plan ahead uh, and write this down. Um, some good definition of legacy that I liked um, by Mark Landers and Rob Rose, um, they, they run and operate the winning difference. They say, good players leave behind memories, banners, and trophies Great players leave behind a culture, values, and standards that create a sustainable advantage each year. Another definition is the story you leave behind for others to tell, the impression you make on the next generation, uh, not necessarily comprised of money or material things, but of character, conviction, and compassion. So, uh, Alonzio, what would you say you want your legacy to be for your family or what is something that you learned from somebody that's gone before you um well todd that, that that's very and it's heart it's heart tugging right there because uh what what i've been told and what i try to make sure that uh, doing that moral inventory daily making sure that you know my life lines up with with the lifestyle that i'm living um but i've always been told to be be concerned about the dash you know, when we, we come into this world, whatever year, for example, I came in in 1968, and there's a dash after that that number. Um, I'm focused on that dash because that is exactly what you're going to be remembered by. So my legacy that I'm uh, trying to establish and write the books, so so to speak, is one of character, one of a servant. Um, I would love people to remember me by uh, what is it, my love, my passion to serve. Uh, in the community, serve my family, be there, uh, be the reliable one. Uh, not so much as material possessions, uh, that big, that big home, those five, six, seven cars, or whatever, which I do not have. Let's just make sure that we're clear <laughs> on that. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, it's those material things that are not going to be remembered. They're just going to be falling by the wayside. But who you are, who are the character? You leave the character of the man behind. What can they talk about? What can they say? about me and that's what is important i want people to say that i'm a loving man uh i want my kids to say that uh, i'm honorable and i am an example to them so that can be passed on to my legacy uh, my children's children and their children to be one of honor respect integrity and uh just do the right thing just do yeah. the right thing easier said than done yeah it's, 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 <laughs> it's difficult uh, but you know do your best at doing the right thing uh, some of the key things I try to say to my kids is that, you know, if you know you did something wrong, the faster you admit that you did it wrong, the least you're going to have to worry about trying to carry that baggage. Right, you know, right. Just, just man up and daughter up. If, it, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Let it get behind you. And can you tell us something about your grandmother? She had a big impact on you. My grandmother, uh, called her Big Mama. Um, my mother put together uh, this past Father's Day she was a huge impact. I would say that she is the one that planted the seed of my religious, uh, my belief in God and all that she's done. 
But one of the special things that I have in remembrance of her, my, my grandmother, for those of you who know uh, what an usher is in a church, she was the head usher at Mount Ariad Baptist Church. And what she left behind for me or what was given to me was her the usher's badge. And she used to wear that badge so proudly. And behind this badge was also just a little bit of a laced handkerchief that she used to pin it on. And I now have that in my possession. So even in my low times and my moments now, I can just go back and I peel back the box and I open it and I look at that. And again, as I said earlier, I see the dash. When I look at that usher's badge and that little handkerchief, I see my grandmother mm -hmm. and uh, everything that she's been an example of uh, to me as a young boy is uh, still um, with me today. You know, some of the, uh, the things that she used to tell me, you know, like, you know, we said earlier, you know, whenever you're in the presence of people speak, you know, mm -hmm. say hello, you don't have to know them. Um, but there's a, a lot of little um, character traits or just things that uh, I remember from my from my big mama. Mm -hmm. And she was a very special, very special woman and still near and dear to my heart to this day. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Yeah, my, my dad's mom was kind of that way. Um, she wasn't an usher, but uh, whenever we would see her in church, um, we knew that she had gum or candy mm. or something for us <laughs> mm -hmm. and so that made church a little more fun and of course she was always uh, smiling and, and thrilled to see us there in church and um, big hugs and uh, those are some things I remember about seeing uh, my dad's mom my, my grandmommy in church uh, and uh, her and my grandfather had a had a very strong faith. Uh, they talked about it a lot. And uh, my, my granddad, I was asking him if, if he was ever going to run for political office one time, and he said, no, I don't have time for that. Um, the only things important to me are uh, faith in uh, God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and in, in our family. And uh, those, those two things keep me busy. Mm -hmm. And so I remembered that. Well, thank you for joining me today on the show. We're always a pleasure. Ending always the show, we have to wrap up. But in a few seconds, just say one more time: if somebody wants Blue Santa to visit them, what do they do? They go to any police substation in the city of San Antonio, fill out application, make sure you have proof of address, birth certificates, fill it out, and sit back and wait for patrol officers to show up with a big bundle and bag of uh, joy, hope, peace, and, and, and strength, and ultimately, most of the love. Let us bring love to your homes this year uh, as Christmas is fast approaching. Or you can go to the SAPD Blue, SAPDBlueSanta.com and find out the necessary information to make yeah. it happen. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Clear. Started getting tongue twisted. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> Started right. getting tongue twisted. Santa. Hey. Good, good job, Santa. Thank As you. usual, good job. Oh, yeah. All right. Santa, about that one. Your phone was right there, by the way. Uh, about that one incident. You don't have witnesses. You can't prove anything. I mean, when I met her, she was spiking the punch with Everclear. What? Santa, how was I to know that she had a fake ID? I mean, <laughs> you can't move me to this. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Let me, oh, let me talk to I'm Mrs. So we let me talk to Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Let's oh, see what she says. Santa. Before we go. Yeah, behind every woman, and behind every man, there is a woman. Yes. With spurs on. I mean, spurring. I mean, inspiring. You inspiring on. you on. Can we get a photograph? Yeah. Absolutely. Us? Hopefully you can. So, I'm so glad we had this talk, yeah. Santa. Thank yeah. you. I feel so much better. Okay. <laughs> Go out and be bad again. <laughs> you have a clear... You know, every time I come upon a guy with a long gray beard, maybe kind of a fork, <laughs> waiting to get off, I have that routine that I go through. Come on. It's the The answer. Do you have another segment later on or in the middle of the week? Do you do this again?
Republican no. Senator James Lankford. I was, I was, I was just wondering. Well, I'm recording on Monday because I'm uh, not going to be here on Saturday. Saturday.